Hi resellers, welcome back to Reseller Rowboat. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe by hitting the little rowboat right here on the bottom right hand corner anytime during the video and be sure you hit the bell so that you will be notified the next time I upload a video or go live. All right, so I'm gonna show you some tips for sourcing afghans, specifically crocheted afghans, at your local thrift store and your Goodwill bins. That seems to be an area of the store that a lot of people um, shy away from simply because they don't know how to spot good work, you know, good crochet skills. So I'm going to give you some tips to help you figure that out and decide whether you want to pass or buy an afghan. So the most logical thing that you're going to do first is hold up the item in front of the light and look for rips, starting from the center out to the edges. Now even if you are a crocheter, you could possibly uh, fix some of the rips, but it would take a lot of time, plus color matching is an issue, so sometimes you're going to want to pass on even the smallest of rips. This is an example of a rip that I would never, never even think twice about. There's no way that I would be willing to sit there and fix that, so that's just thrown in kind of for funsies. And this one right here is another example of a rip. I'm showing this one because sometimes in a pattern, there will be a natural hole in the pattern. And so you need to make sure that that hole is supposed to be there. And the way you can tell that it's not is because these right here, these little loops, those actually should have yarn going through them. So this is, an, this is a large rip. This is one I wouldn't fool with. Um, the second thing I want to talk to you about is the styles. I have sold all different styles of afghans online, but my biggest sellers are granny squares and also the chevron ripple blankets. And I'm going to show you a couple of pictures here in just a moment of that pattern. Here's a great photo of a ripple chevron pattern. Here's a great example of a granny square blanket. These sell really well. Um, the show Roseanne, the Connor family, always had a blanket similar to this on the back of their couch, and um, these sell really well. Okay, another thing that you want to really be pay attention to is fade. Um, a lot of people have afghans and they put them on the back of their couch or their chair and it, they're sitting in direct sunlight. And so what you end up with is a really bright section of the afghan and then one small patch or even a large patch sometime of color fade. If you see any of that, uh, chances are that blanket is not going to sell for you. So I would pass on that item as well. The next thing you want to do is look for loose ends. Um, you will find loose ends from when someone has changed color or they've run out of yarn. And I'm going to show you a picture of some loose ends right now. This right here is a picture of what I mean by loose ends. This person crocheted and they did not cut the loose ends. So you're just going to take each one of these strands. You can do both of these at one time if you want to. And you're just going to go in and out, in and out, in and out. When you get to the end, make a cut and just kind of push it back in there and it shouldn't unravel. Here's another example of loose ends that you might find. If you're not a crocheter, loose ends are still an, a really easy thing to fix. You can use a toothpick, you can use a needle, and what you want to do is just take the end and you want to weave it in and out of the stitches and then at the end you just want to clip it with a pair of scissors. It's not a problem just depending on how many loose ends you find, how much time you want to spend tying up loose ends as we say. But it doesn't mean that the afghan is not worth anything. It doesn't mean that the afghan is going to rip. The stitches are going to rip. It just means someone forgot to tie it off or the loose end just came out. Maybe they didn't weave it in good enough. The next thing I've had questions asked of me is pilling. And yes, you will see pilling and there there is some pilling on this afghan I'm getting ready to list. I'm going to put some pictures up in just a second of pilling. Um, pilling is not usually a problem. Um, people expect that that happens in the wash now if there is major pilling which i'm going to show you a picture of in just a second you do want to pass on that because chances are um, you're not going to be able to salvage that afghan um, if you cut the pill um, you are looking at a possible 
rip or tear. So just your minor pilling. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to hold this up, but I don't know if you can see. It's more what I would just call fuzz, fuzz pilling. Do you see that on the edges? It's really not bad. It's just simply from having been washed. In this picture, we see an afghan that shows a lot of fuzz and pilling, and it could be resolved by a sweater shaver. However, it would just depend on how large this afghan was as to whether I would you know, purchase it for the time it would take to take that off. Here is the one I was talking about. The pilling is just really, really bad right here. This one right here is a, like a big knot. And so if you try to cut that or shave that, you would probably shave or cut into the stitch itself. I would not bother with, with purchasing that afghan. All right, this is an example of one of the Afghans that I sold recently. This one sold for like $28, and it was um, just a blanket throw, 56 by 44. And the way I do it is I just measure the blanket, and then I do a search on therapy for crocheted handmade blankets and you know that are similar in that size. And that's kind of how I base, on, base what I'm going to... Uh, listed at. Here's one that I sold on Poshmark for $30. Again, this is the Ripple Chevron pattern. This is probably one of the most popular crocheted patterns out there, and it was really bright. Another thing that you want to look for in an afghan is if the stitches are too tight, and I'm going to show you some pictures um, right here explaining how you can tell if an afghan has been crocheted too tightly or if someone has dropped stitches. It's a very easy way of looking at it. All right, this is what I mean by someone who either used a very tight stitch, a lot of tension when they were they were crocheting, and it's probably that they are losing stitches, and so you can see that this blanket right here is getting smaller as we go down the edge. That's a really good sign. Also, another way you can tell is when you lay it flat, you're going to see little humps along the way, and that means it just will not lay flat. That's because this, the tension is too high. Um, once you've sourced your afghans, then when you're ready to list them, be sure that you use the proper keywords like ripple and chevron in the same uh, title. Be sure that you measure the afghan really well and that you put you know what type of item it is like is it going to be for a baby is it going to be used as a bedspread for a queen size or a king size and you know you can look up mattress sizes easily on Google um, you want to know if it's used as a lap blanket or a lap throw throw is another good keyword to use um, those will bring you viewers so I hope this video has given you some excitement about possibly going out and sourcing afghans um, to sell online. You see I've got a little bit of work to do here on this one. Um, but anyway, I would love to see some of the afghans that you source out there in the wild. And with that, let's see what sold over the weekend. All right, today is May 18th, 2020. My first eBay store is up 94.5%. My second eBay store is down 20.8%. These are the solds for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, May 15th, 16th, and 17th. The first item that we're looking at was a hand-painted streetwear hoodie sweatshirt that I found at the bins, and I took a best offer. It sold for $83.61, and all of these are including shipping. This same buyer later messaged me and asked me if I would combine shipping if they purchased these shoes. I said yes, of course, and I, this, I collected $23.30 for those. This Lucky Brand tunic sold for $27.22. It's been listed less than a week. Here's one of my Voodoo items that I highlighted in one of my last Voodoo episodes, and it sold for $50.63. Another Lucky Brand tunic, it sold for $17.86. Here's another Voodoo item that sold, and it sold for $26.70. This is something that I bought at a garage sale years ago. I didn't lose money on this sale, but I only made a couple of bucks because back when I first listed it, I didn't understand how shipping went, and I didn't put enough weight on the package. Here's another Voodoo item that sold. This is a needlepoint kit, $23.45. 
This Victoria's Secrets cardigan sold for $20.98. And here's another tunic that was listed less than a week, $22.25. This Capresso Elegance water tank sold from my appliance store for $21.76. I had two Poshmark sales this weekend. One was this Old Navy tunic. It sold for $11. And this pair of Vans sold for $40. My total Amazon sales were $22.94 and I did not have any Mercari sales this weekend. That brings my grand total gross for three days to $391.70 divided by the three days was an average of $130.57. I hope that you will join me on my next live stream. Until next time, may God keep you in his pocket and paddle on.